Um, of the market is changing, um, the, the consumer's behavior is changing, and obviously the business uh, landscape is changing. So how February is now adopting itself and to take on another era, I think this will be very um, uh, interesting topic for everyone who are coming today. Um, but uh, I would like to just uh, ask, ask how many of you are actually uh, not based in Science Park? Okay. Oh, a very good percentage of you. Great. <laughs> uh, and how many of you have come to Science Park for, for the first time? Okay, in fact, you are all very, uh, most of you are actually uh, um, a very, um, uh, at least frequent or uh, at least come to here um, uh, and know us. So I won't, in that case, won't spend too much time explaining who we are, what we do, um, and, uh, given that uh, situation. Um, just want to emphasize, uh, we have been uh, working with Sam uh, for the MIT EF for a series of talks and today is another one of those talks and we look forward to, um, uh, again, many more distinguished guests that we can invite for um, a sharing. And the idea is actually um, bring more entrepreneurship, um, share the best uh, practices and market trend and also how a companies are facing uh, tough times and, and how do they cope with and I think these are very essential for uh, everyone of you to have uh, uh, my share. So I would like to pass it back to Sam without taking too much of the time. Great. Again, thanks uh, for everything. Thank you. Adam. <laughs> Take care. Okay. And on that note, we have started this session. Um, I, I've been all year starting on time because we have to end on time at 5.30. Um, there's always, at the very end, lots of 20 more questions. Um, so I'm going to say not another word, except that John went to high school and elementary school and is from Hong Kong originally. Um, and I have been talking to about 200 people this year, face to face, in their offices. Um, about the MIT Enterprise Forum and Next Generation Leadership Council, and always saying, oh, John Chen's coming to town. John, well, John Chen is in town now. Um, but uh, everyone is, ooh, ah, um, you're a hero, um, you're an icon here in Hong Kong. Um, I don't need to read his bio. You've got all of that electronically. Um, so to so save some time, I'm going to just throw it over to John. Thank, Thank you. Um, we appreciate it. Thank you all. I, I don't know about hero in, in Hong Kong. You know, I, one thing I found out about Hong Kong is uh, that the higher you are, the more people shoot at you. So, <laughs> so I, I don't want to be any of a hero. Um, so let's have a chat. I, I don't know what um, everybody want to talk about. I think Sam asked me to speak a little bit about uh, BlackBerry and the turnaround. Um, this is my third turnaround, um, and you know, I, one company is called Pyramid Technology. Maybe not too many people know that. Um, that we turned that around um, and then uh, spent a lot of time at Sybase, which is a database company, that, um, and they turned that around. Uh, and now we are encountering probably the toughest assignment in the mall, um, which is uh, BlackBerry. Um, BlackBerry, I, you know, I don't know how many people experience with BlackBerry, but anybody who was in IT for long enough, to, um, you probably had caused one of our products, and anywhere from a rim pagers to literally tens and twenties and thirties different models of, of handset plus you know software technology behind it and BBM messaging um, that people may or may not have uh, experience of that. Um, I came into the company about 11 months ago. Um, the company clearly kind of lost its way. Um, it's in somewhat of a, both a financial trouble but more importantly the strategic troubles which is where does a company go from there? Um, when we used to be 50% plus of all the wireless communication markets um, and have a strong portfolio set of technology and patents. And we, we then became, you know, um, a kind of small players compared to the Apple and, and the Samsung or the Android of the world. Um, and, and the company was losing a lot of money um, and we lost a lot of, you know, we spent a lot of cash. Uh, the quarter that I took over, um, we spent over 1.1 billion in cash. 
uh, cash burn. So there's not too many companies in this world can handle uh, that kind of load from a quarterly basis. Um, and so uh, we quickly went to work. Um, one quarter later, we have uh, we spend or we, we cash burn about 775 million. Um, and then the following quarter was 255. We just reported um, uh, last quarter that we burned 36 million of cash and um, we were able to turn the, the device business, the handset business profitable and have, it was able to generate uh, at least, you know, uh, have the cash balance at 3.1 billion. So now we're kind of set to make, we made a couple of investments, uh, about three of them uh, since I came. And then we are now at a point that we're hoping that the company financially stabilized, we're not starting to focus on growth at the market that we go into. Um, still have about um, 8,000 people around the world. Um, we have some very strong market segment, like Avengers, <coughs> there's a very strong market segment. Um, and we have very strong technology segment. Um, like, you know, we still are the number one player in encryption, in security, in productivities, um, and in reliability, so in, in kind of the enterprise um, uh, communications world. Um, we are the backbone for a lot of the um, famous government uh, armed forces, as well as intelligence community, as well as the data doing work. Um, for example, obviously, uh, being a Canadian company, the Canadian government is all centralized on um, BlackBerry, with the exception of Parliament. The Parliament of Canada is just kind of like uh, the people is now sitting in the middle of the road in Central. <laughs> uh, they just like to be different, and so they're looking at various different technology. Um, and um, we have uh, today about 44,000 patents, uh, which one of the richest patents uh, before in the world. Plus, you know, we have one of the uh, youngest patents. We you know, the, the average expiration date for these patents is about 16 years. So this makes us um, very extremely competitive in that world. Um, now, you know, how we got into trouble um, has a lot to do. Company doesn't get in trouble, especially a company that big, doesn't get in trouble because we've done one thing wrong. We have done a number of things that was not, um, you know, probably not appropriate. And, and when we're chasing a market that we don't really have uh, a reason to chase, which is the consumer market. So one of the things that I've done and I came in was we, we kind of repivoting, maybe um, refocusing on the enterprise world. Um, so the handset that you just saw us release called the Passport um, is a square one-to-one -one aspect ratio. People ask, why is it square? Well, first of all, it's different. And this is important to make um, a, a market statement why is, you know, that you don't just follow other people. Uh, by the way, the other people were following us in the beginning. So we wanted to make sure that we're a part of that. Uh, but more importantly, we want to focus on a few things that, that enhance productivity. So I thought recapturing productivity and, and security was an important thing for uh, BlackBerry uh, to move forward. So the one thing uh, about the square designs, uh, you may or may not know this, books are designed on a page 66 characters across on, on a book, right? Um, in the square design, with the extra ratio, we're able to display the page with 60 characters across. And therefore, there's a lot of little wrap around and so forth. So you actually see the entire page. And, and it's meant to be productive because, um, you know, you, when you're in healthcare applications or in the financial application, or trading application, when you have everything that's form based, um, this is the most, uh, the best design to capture the entire screen. So, um, so that's one of the aspects of that. We turn the keyboard into a mouse pad under certain, uh, it's called a capacitive keyboard technology. Um, we turn that into a mouse pad under certain application, like you're reading a spreadsheet or you're on a website. Um, then you could actually move around the keyboard, that's just moving your finger around. That you, you, that's turned out to be a mouse. Now why is that important? Because that you, without you touching the screen, um, you're able to move pages around and screens around. And so, therefore, you know, give you faster uh, comprehension or better comprehension. And then, you know, obviously, we turn our keyboard back. The keyboard has proven to be, uh, you know, the fastest, uh, you know, and the most reliable entry form. Uh, form. And so, and we added a lot of batteries. Um, for example, so the, the phone was 36 hours 
we train chargers, um, and you don't, uh, you know, you're not like uh, if you're using iPhone, you know, you, you need to recharge uh, every half a day or something. Um, and then, and then on top of that, the RF uh, antenna, we have some patterns on the RF frequency antenna. So the entire frame of this device is actually an antenna. So versus a lot of the antenna phones that you can find today are a T-shaped antenna uh, at the back. Um, so this, the entire frame is an antenna. So therefore, it allows a better RF receptivity. So, so those are all things that we put in and thought through why it is in that format and all that shape. And at the end, it was going back and focus on not only the security of the software and the hardware, but also we focus on the productivity. So that's one aspect. What I've done um, in the, um, when I came in 11 months ago, was to break the company into four operating units. Uh, because we are actually in four different types of businesses. Um, and the reason of breaking it down is easier to manage, but has better objectivity. Because every piece of business is slightly different. Um, one, one piece of business is the device business. The most important thing about the device business, other than turning out state-of-the-art, very innovative, cool design uh, that fit in the security and productivity space and the privacy space, is to make sure that we make money. So that goes for the people here who understand manufacturing. That means that you have to redo your supply chains completely, um, the relationship with your vendors and the, and, and the uh, um, the, the cash uh, usage and, and inventory build up and all that needs to be the logistic and warranty and, 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 and you know, distribution channels. All that we, we, we look at um, a, a basically from A to Z. Um, that's how you run a manufacturing company. At the same time, we have a software business. We which actually have 80,000 uh, servers around the world, which a lot of them in governments and banks and, and, and um, hospitals. Uh, the 80,000 uh, server uh, was not the emphasis of the company when the majority of the company was on hardware business. So this is a part that I wanted to really highlight um, in downstream because we have some really strong technology in, in server. Uh, we made the server technology cross-platform. The product's called the Best 12, the uh, Backberry Enterprise server is going to come out. Um, we announced it's going to come out on November 13, which is in a few weeks from now. Um, it's been very well received. We already have uh, competitors and our own base upgraded about 3.4 million licenses so far. We only we only allowed that for six months and it's already had uh, 3.4 million. So we expect this to be a very big number of streams. Um, the next area is BBM. I don't know how many people heard of BBM. Um, the battery messengers for at, at one time was the most popular uh, before you have the line all the WhatsApp in the world that comes up. It's enterprise grade. Um, we be able to you know secure your transactions. It's pin to pin, so you know even I don't have your your mapping of the pin. We only know the device numbers, uh, so we don't know it's you. Uh, the pin to pin um, uh, collaboration or uh, communication provide you in terms of the privacy. Um, and then and then and then of course we build in a lot of different features. Um, for example, one feature is coming out um, is uh, we're able to recall the message I send you. Now, in the uh, PC world, when I send you a recall, the last email, all it does is to make me more interested or make you more interested <laughs> in reading what's being recorded, right? <laughs> so, because the message is still there. Um, in our PBM world, when we record it, if you have not read, the, so the flag was not turned on, you have a D, which is the delivery flag, and then the R hasn't come on, which is you haven't read it, we could actually wipe out the message, you don't see what it is. You just know that I sent you a message that I have recorded. That's all we did. Um, and then there are also features that we built in. Is once you read the message, you could set a parameter. If you read the message, it will disappear on its own, just like a spy movie. A little bit of a Snapchat type, type um, uh, approach. So there are a lot of, of items, uh, things. So um, a year ago, we had 45 million active users, monthly active users, which is the number, you know, how you measure um, the messaging kind of a popularity, so to speak. So we have 45 MAU. Since we opened up for iPhone and Android and Windows, it costs us a lot of business, by the way. It costs us from not selling handset because it runs on iPhone and it runs on Android, so people don't want to do that. Some countries, BPMs are very big. Um, uh, when that happened, um, 
It was a short-term hit about a year ago on handset, which is a big number. But today we have 91 million active users. Now it runs on iPhone, Android, and Windows as well as BlackBerry. So the idea is now what is it going to do to monetize it? This is why we have a business unit put together. The business unit is focusing on how do we monetize a, for today, a 91 MAU, 91 million MAU. So sometime down the road, I hope within the next six months, we'll cross 100 million mark, which will be about the same size of line for those people who know, you know, um, in, in, in this space. Um, the question really is how do you monetize it going forward and, and in a way that both the consumer and enterprise will both like it. Now, EBM has some uniqueness to it. We have something called the channels. Today it's over half a million channels. These are you, you and your friends to build a channel, like Pinterest, or a, a, um, a company to build a channel. Um, Disney uses uh, the BBM channel, Coca-Cola uses the BBM channel to get their message out to all the active users, uh, or the non-active users, uh, registered users. So, um, this actually, we don't charge any money for it right now, but over time, when there's enough value created, that's where, that's where we're going to have a business unit deal to charge some money in that. Finally, the last but not least, I don't know how many people have heard of a company called QNX. QNX is a microkernel uh, technology company that actually derived out of Linux, so it's same Android base, but it's a secure uh, uh, it's a secure Linux. This is now um, the it's a, it's a wholly owned company by us. This is now the the blueprint for our IoT world, the Internet of Things. This is where we use the kernel to interact and connect with each other to make sure that the device is securely communicated. The number one application today is in a, a connected cars. You're going to hear a lot about that. Um, we are at 50% of market share, at least 50% of market share of the connected the car world in terms of the infotainment systems. And we're branching into connecting the, the kind of the, um, the maintenance and the well-being of the car. You're managing your brake pad and you know, watching your driving conditions and interacting with the GPS and so forth and alerting <coughs> uh, early alert of, of um, engine troubles, failures, collisions, the whole nine yard. So it's how a car manages itself um, through the cloud. So that, um, we have 50% of market share, and, and that's based on this QNX. In the past, all we focus on is design win. We haven't really focused on retail, or retail, license monetizations. Um, this, by creating a business unit and put their own metrics on, they are now needing to focus on the fact that we're not going to give away our technology. We're going to start to make a business out of it. Now obviously, you can't just say, well, I now want to charge you. So you have to add more value. Why people will want to charge, or uh, want to pay you for the money. So, underlying all that, not only the portfolios or the patterns, are a couple of key principle. Across it, we want to make sure that everything we build hardware, software, messaging, embedded, are all the most secure. We want to make very sure that secure communication and secure wireless are the number one you know, value add that we can take to the market. Privacy is the next one, um, which are the most, once you be able to secure it, you could private, you know, we could protect your privacy. That one today is not a huge enough market because everybody's aware of wanting their own data to themselves. Um, but people in this generation, so the younger generations, are a little bit more open and loose to you know, how they let their data goes around, like Facebook and Twitter and all that. Um, I think this is changing. Um, down the world, down the road, the world is going to change to more electronic and mobile phone. Payment is one. Your healthcare records, um, how hospitals are run, how banking systems are run, um, how governments are run, are going to be wireless first, mobile first. It's not going to be, it's the, we're changing that point right now. It has always been server-based first, and then internet-based, and now it's going to change to mobile first. When it, when, it, when it turned every on application onto mobile first, your privacy and security is the most important thing. So this is where, and people have always ask me, what, you know, what is your blueprint of, of bringing BlackBerry back to relevancy? First thing is you gotta make money. So we repair the balance sheets and we're starting on the income statements. The second thing is you have to have something you do better than everybody else. And that's needed. 
So we're going to focus on security, privacy, communications, those areas. Uh, and the, the world will come to a realization that those are going to be the most important things, especially when you have a completely automated home, the connected homes. Uh, when you have health box in your house that monitor your, um, your, health, your, your family's uh, health statistics. One project we're working on with TELUS, which is one of the three um, top uh, Canadian telecom, is to upgrade their cable in your home into a health monitor box. And the, the, and the number one principle or the motto that we have between the two groups of engineers, we're going to send you an ambulance before you know you need one. <laughs> <laughs> and that, by the way, if you're in the healthcare business, then you will know that is super important of saving life. Um, you know, if somebody has a stroke, the heart went irregular, um, and all that, you know, the dialysis machine broke down, a lot of things, um, you know, pacemakers is acting funny, all these things are a matter of seconds. Um, and, and so we were trying to, to put that into every box. Now this is currently is a very Canadian driven initiative because the Canadian government, um, you know, obviously has a strong interest in that. Uh, just one thing about healthcare is everybody needs it around the world or automated healthcare systems. Uh, but each country has their own regulation and policies. Uh, they have own compliances on, on private information sharing. Uh, you know, the, the protocol between doctor-patients interactions. Uh, all that's are very, very different. So we're building secure conferencing. Uh, we, are, we just bought a company that encrypt voice. Um, this is a company that uh, uh, Mer uh, Chancellor Merkel of Germany went straight to a BlackBerry <laughs> and used this technology once um, Snowden somehow to view that, um, you know, our friend, the friendly uh, friendly uh, countries are uh, listening in all, all the conversations. Uh, and so the entire parliament of Germany now is on our devices. And, 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 and. So, you know, I actually have one that, that with that protocol built in. In order to crack that code, uh, for those who are mathematicians in this way, we have uh, a 256 bit combination. Um, in order to crack that code, you, you have like 1.2 billion combinations that you could try. And so we figured out that no, no phone calls would be that long for you to, to crack it. So, um, and, and so then we are, we're, we're doing a lot of good, good things in that area. So we now have encrypted voice, or always have encrypted data. We have encrypted messaging um, and encrypted texts. Our texts are encrypted. So when we're texting each other, um, first of all, if you text on my system, you're not reviewing. Other than your PIN number, you're not reviewing your identity. Um, and then in addition to that, the texts are encrypted, so even the people intercepted would just be a bunch of garbage, um, you know, unless you have the key, of course. Um, then we let, um, we now starting to let users to create their own key so that I don't have any knowledge or ability to decrypt, uh, you know, the user's interactions. Um, of course, if you have a big enough supercomputers like a country has, uh, they could probably get to the point that they decrypt it. Um, but that's, that's some serious stuff. That's not just a bunch of hackers sitting in a room. Uh, that's some serious computing. So, um, so that's kind of the where, you know, the focus on the technology, the focus on the roadmap. Um, overall, in, 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 over long term in the world, it's going to be all IoT based or Internet of Things. Uh, uh, this is one term that you're going to hear until you get really sick about it. A sick of it. Um, everybody in data, you know, in the data analytics world, in the cloud world, uh, in the mobile world, they always they call they call everything IoT. Nobody's going to tell you they're not in the IoT space. Um, so, what is the BlackBerry participation in IoT? I'm only focusing on how to connect the half a trillion devices secure. That's all I'm going to do. Okay, and I figured if I could do that and protect their privacy, it could be a huge company. And so, so that's the, we're going to make money first, we're going to build our roadmap that way, we're going to move the operating uh, company model into all focus on the same endpoint, and, but we, three out of four operating units are cross-platform. So we also cross the threshold to understand that BlackBerry at one time was the only device out there 
for enterprise. Okay, we now realize it's not. And we assume, by the way, it might not only be Apple or Samsung. You know, ten years from today, it might be it might be somebody else like you know Xiaomi or Lenovo or names that you never heard of before. Um, so we want to make very sure that we are ready to be compatible with any devices the customer would like to pick. And it could be cross. It could be some of these, some of these, some of these, and which a lot of companies now doing that. Because companies, enterprises, interesting enough, are, are not all uniform. You know, you have the, uh, a group of people, like take a bank, for example. The investment banking people and the legal people love to use BlackBerry because of security. But, you know, other people doesn't need BlackBerry security. And so they might be using an iPhone or they might be using an Android or, or a window phone. Um, so we got to have to be able to treat everything as, you know, part of our ecosystems, not just BlackBerry. So by opening ourselves up across, you know, the cross-platform, we then created a market size much bigger than what BlackBerry is aiming at originally, which is the device. So that's why we opened it before operating unit. So that's kind of the long-term plan, oh, short-term, long-term, mid-term plan. And um, so far, in the 11 months that we've been together working on it, um, we've been doing very well on the financial and the balance sheet side. We no longer have viability problems uh, like we had first had 11 months ago. Now it's a matter of how you execute the channels and the distribution and how cool is your product. It's come down to that, okay? It takes, it takes time, but it's one step at a time. So that's, I'm going to stop here and then open up for any... Um, I'm going to come out here um, and I have someone helping me pass the mic around. But uh, like for trying to catch my eye or catch Jamie's eye and raise your hand um, and get our attention so we can get the mics to you very early. But let me start with one question. China, um, it's Sybase, that, that was a big important market. We spent a lot of time in China, we developed a lot of strong relationships in China over the years. Um, but it's not a big market for BlackBerry. Do you see that changing? Well, I hope that we change it. I'm going to APAC uh, next uh, two weeks from now, uh, early November in Beijing. Um, by the way, uh, I, I, spoke, I told somebody during lunchtime today, um, it's wonderful today being a Canadian technology company versus a U.S. technology company. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when it relates to China and Russia. I uh, don't understand why. Uh, so uh, I was very fortunate to, add, to be asked to moderate a panel, uh, a panel of connectivity. That's going to be interesting uh, on its own. But uh, my sense that China was one of my biggest market when I was running Sybase. And we actually have 19% of the database market share in China. Um, nowhere around the world that we have that big a you know, or disproportionate percentage and we're running it. Um, Blackberry, uh, how many people understand the term 5i country? Do you know what 5i's are? You know, okay. Right, great. Uh, least, um, five eyes are five country um, that have decided to pool their intelligence. Um, intelligence, I mean like CIA. Uh, the intelligence community together by sharing data. And of course, you know, UK, Canada, Australia, United States, and France. These are the five I countries. We are dominant in the five I countries because of our security, both hardware and software. Um, now, um, if I just crash into China market, um, first of all, I probably would need a lot of export licenses um, to be able to ship some of our product. That's number one. Number two, Chinese has now developed to the point that they actually don't trust the foreign technology either. So, as sensitive as the technology, the way that we, our technology are used, I have, be, I have to be very cautious in how I approach the China market. But I can assure you, I will approach the China market because it's a market too big to ignore. But it's also one that we have to walk an extremely fine line and make sure that it's very transparent to, the, to my 5 i customers. Um, otherwise, I stand losing a big piece of my business before I get any new businesses, and then I, I, found, I found myself in a no man's land. Um, so, but China, so 
next um, two weeks from now is my first official visit running BlackBerry, the Canadian company, yeah. <laughs> uh, in China, to China. Uh, and it will be, be interesting to see what I find out and what opportunities there are. Okay, sounds good. Question here. I'm going to fire my first question. I share the same, same name, I'm John Chen, by the way. Oh, hi. <laughs> Basically, uh, there's a lot of us. <laughs> you still remember me, right? Got that. Oh, got that. Yep. Yeah. Right, we share the same name. But anyway, um, uh, I, I love the line with uh, a question on security and government. Um, I, I want to ask the question on, the, you know, in the commercial world, we segment our market. Uh, we price it high to, to our highest value customer, and, and then you have other segments. But in, in, in your world of security, uh, your biggest customer probably government, right? So in my view, uh, if you have a 5i, that's fine. They will share the same technology, which presumably the highest in the world, right? But then how do you handle the rest? You know, uh, because you're really fighting against each other. You, you know that it's a cyber uh, war game. I think eventually. So it's really difficult to do that, it's at least not publicly. So um, may, you know, can you share your view on that? It's really hard to, let's say, you know, the government wants you to sell less technology to the public so they can tap into it, right? I, I would assume that's what they wanted to do. They want to protect us, uh, our own communication, but I want to listen to yours. <laughs> How are you going to solve that problem yeah, as, as a market? Standard? This is a, uh, <coughs> this is a big, uh, this is a big question. Um, uh, so, um, the kind of technology we deal with, we have to deal with a concept called the lawful assets. Um, and oftentimes, the government, for security reasons, um, and in a lot of cases, anti terrorism reasons, um, they would need to have a tap into you know, my security system. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Now we don't do, um, we fought that a lot because we believe you're a consumer, whether you're a individuals or you're running um, a, you know, an enterprise, uh, a big enterprise um, uh, of any sort. Um, the government uh, shouldn't have just free liberty to tap into what you're doing and who you're talking to and so forth. Right? Uh, unless you're taking a uh, new picture of yourself, the nude selfie, you know, of course, that we don't do any of those stuff. Right? <laughs> the one thing um, uh, is that we require a court order to do that. Okay, now let's go to your question of we have various levels of security technology. The five I countries and some of the very sensitive high end. Um, they not only take our highest level of technology, but they add on to it. And then we allow the ability to add on to it so that I couldn't go back in and tap it. Most enterprise does not need that level or would, would rather not spend that kind of money. Then the next level down um, is very adequate for enterprise um, and usually focus on malware and anti-hacking um, system or, or alerting system, alerting hacking systems. So then it goes down um, in level and the individual consumers, um, the encryption um, C are smaller um, and where we're generating some checksums, but things that it takes time but you can break it. Um, and the good thing is um, ours are the hardest to break. But I would not challenge people to say that you know um, that it's not breakable. But as you go up in level and and you go up in and the security thing is not only about software encryptions or ECC or whatever. It's not only about that. It's about the whole systems, the uh, business processes. Like if you have a open-ended internet, you could have the most secure thing, but you have an open-ended internet interface. Then you just render your whole system. Insecure, right? So you cannot leave doors. I mean, it's like you have a very secure house, but you left the front door open, and that's unfortunately that's where the intruder comes through. 
Um, so it's really about architecture, it's sort of about practices, the processing, as well as each of the component has to be extremely hard to crack through. Uh, there is no, other than a physical lockdown, you know, there is no uh, perfect security. There's no such thing. A physical lockdown plus a combination of others to make it harder and harder to get to it is, the, is the answer. So um, what we sell to the highest level um, and the, the ability to derive even better code like this, uh, uh, like defense intelligence of the United States, are different from you know you and I everyday users. Okay. Question here. Uh, the other way. Hi, John. Um, as you know, I'm a big fan of yours. <laughs> For three years, I've seen you turn around sideways when you were just competing with Oracle, sideways. I mean, Oracle, uh, SAP, Microsoft, and IBM. I wonder how do you see this challenge? How different? Is it more difficult, less difficult? Are you, are you uh, employing similar strategies? Well, the principle of business is the same. Um, uh, it's very, very different. Um, it's, uh, in many ways, it's, uh, it's much more difficult uh, than Sybase, and it has to do with the following thing. Number one, Sybase is an enterprise software business. Uh, and it's been around for long enough time to build up a number of big companies um, using Sybase. Very sticky. Uh, for example, Sybase ran all the trading systems for Goldman Sachs. And, and so extremely, you know, Goldman, as long as it worked, Goldman Sachs had written so many added code onto it that they would not just one day rip it all out and throw it away. Um, so, so therefore, they will keep maintaining those systems as long as you continue to upgrade your technology. That maintenance is very high dependency as well as high margin. BlackBerry doesn't enjoy that. Okay? In fact, BlackBerry uh, traditional services business, so some of you may or may not have, which we call the 9900s or the BOS, uh, the BlackBerry OS, um, those are depleting very fast not only because of depleted by competition, by ourselves too. When we release a new devices, they replace the old device, my old set feeds gone. This is the number one issue of BlackBerry, or the, 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 the business issue that I have to deal with, is that I have to replenish the revenue faster than the old revenue coming down. Okay? Um, and and that's, that's what I'm working on every day. Um, so it's different. And the other thing is, um, BlackBerry is extremely iconic company. Um, everything I say or not say publicly got reported and sometimes distorted. Uh, and um, so I have to be very careful on what my message is. So far, it's okay. Um, but I'm sure it would have hit some bumps in the road and people will amplify the negative. Um, and you know, in, in our business, you know, my business is the turnaround business. We're never as bad as people think we are, and we're never as good as we think we are. People are like have a very bipolar view. You, you're either very good or you're very bad. I will bring you an example. In 1997, most of everyone who's around or know and thought Apple would go out of business within months. Remember? A year ago. So that was nothing Apple could do. It's right then. You know, they have the Corel software and all that. Everybody said it was a disaster. Nobody will buy that. Mac, Macintosh. Oh, that's a three percent of the market share. Only in the education market. Nobody should buy that, right? Well, guess what happened? Last year, I think Apple achieved the highest market cap company in the world. They did an excellent, right? So if you think about that, it's, it's always like this. You know, there is always, um, you know, this very bipolar view of companies. Um, it, it, in fact, the true, the reality is every company is somewhere in the middle of that bipolar ship. Um, and you need to, you know, and, and a good set of managers will learn how to deploy the assets correctly. Deploy the assets correctly, meaning you, 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 you extract the proper value for the company uh, and for the shareholders by not overspending and betting on the company. That's the deployment of the assets correctly. Um, so those are the, the, two main, uh, the, the two main ones. The third one is 
the competition moves faster, the market moves even faster. Uh, so, you know, you probably remember the days when the first Motorola headset that looks like a brick, right? <laughs> it's like you, you put in a ears like this big. Uh, but people like to carry it because it's a set of symbols. You know, they, they, they love to carry it. Uh, and, you know, the antenna was, was long and flexible, so it, don't, it doesn't pop you, but it's flexible. <laughs> Um, and today, you know, you could have uh, the smallest uh, phone that I have seen was an embedded phone, it's almost like this big, okay, more powerful than the whole, uh, the uh, old Motorola, whatever they call it, um, at the time. So the, the market changes a lot faster. The market is now getting ready for one thing. The device that you all think about, the phone, is going to be a very small number compared to what device really means. The um, sensor is going to be the biggest device business in the world. And the sensor will have intelligence, will have feedback, will have IP, it's all cloud connected. It's going to be part of your life, you know, whether you like it or not. Uh, and, and that's what it's going to be uh, in the future. Um, a phone is going to be very flexible. I don't mean the bendable iPhone 6. Uh, you know, the bend wire is just a fun problem. You could bend it, but it doesn't bend back. Uh, so, and, but the real phones that a lot of the communication I see now is that every, a lot of the advanced research are working on literally a piece of flexible plastic. And that piece of flexible plastic had a couple of soft key on it that you could actually communicate very quickly. And, and, um, and, and you can actually see it through, it's transparent. When it needs to be displayed, some subject, it, it, it will have a screen on it. It's a very cool game. You know, it could be your ID card, it could be your credit card, it could be a lot of stuff. You can carry it anywhere, you can wear it as a badge. Um, it, it's pretty cool. Now, those still takes time to come because the yield ratios are very low and the cost therefore is extremely high. It's not affordable commercial. Okay, great, another question here. Uh, hi, John. Uh, I've got two questions. So the first question is about strategy. Uh, when you first take over the company, I guess there are many different routes. Uh, you can move the company forward. So how do you pick the routes that you're, you're picking right now? And is there like some uh, alternative routes that you're considering? Uh, the second question is about Kilo app. Uh, so the, the phone is one thing, but what people are using are the apps. And I think uh, the earlier uh, Blackberries, they really crank uh, the email applications. So is there other uh, killer applications that you're considering? I could answer both questions in one piece of it. Um, um, and it doesn't have to be a trouble company, it could be just any company. Uh, when you take over a company or when you take over any business for that matter, the first thing you need to do is to figure out what are your strongest assets things you know how to do, things that the market give you the credibility. Uh, in technology, you, you have to research the pattern, uh, the IP rights, and your engineering capability. Uh, and that will determine the, the path you take. And remember, I now go back to uh, the whole idea of, I talk about security, encryption, um, productivity, and privacy. Um, and, you know, safe to say, uh, if I look through my 44,000 patents, uh, some of those patents are very strong in protecting that rights for ours. I think what happened in the past few years, we went away from that. Um, those are the stuff that the enterprise rely on us to provide. Uh, once we went away from that and tried to chase the uh, people paying uh, Angry Bird or whatever, uh, and that's when we fell apart. Um, because then it becomes a eyeball volume game. And we, we since we'll be selling to enterprise, like you see you know, bankers and lawyers and accountant users back there all the time, you still see a lot of them. We have about 55 million active users around the world. So there's 55 million people who are still using them uh, every day. Um, but those people, you need to profile those people. Those people, I met a bunch of them for breakfast this morning. Um, they are the ex-bankers, they're the venture capitalists and all that. They don't play Angry Bird uh, <laughs> or Candy Crusher. Uh, they need great email, reliable, 
highly compressed, be able to get the signal everywhere in the world, you know, three level below basement when they can, uh, the maximum signal, and they want their phone to be ready at all times. It's a matter of, this is a profile of people that wants to achieve something and using it as a tool. It's not people that want to spend time on a device to either entertain or occupy themselves. Those are very distinct class. So if you look at all the spectrums of customers, of markets out there, 30% is in the space that I'm staring at. So we, if there's a billion phones sold, there's at least 300 million is in that category. Those 300 million customers chose the phone for that purpose. There are at least another 30% on the other side that no matter what, they don't care. When they look at the keyboard, they don't look at it as a productivity. They look at it as very old style, you know, out of style, non-sexy stuff. Okay? This is where their father and their grandparent uses. So I'm not going to win that because those people want the most, you know, the best game on it. Um, and so those are the two categories. So when we talk about killer apps, you go back and tie to what security, for example, reason why we invested in encrypted voice is a killer app. Okay. When two bankers talk a deal, it could move the market. When they talk on the phone, on a mobile phone, with our encrypted voice, there's no way for anybody to intercept that conversation, unless they're standing right next to them. <laughs> so that's, that's of course, it's not about <laughs> Um, but anyway, so that's, that's the answer. Okay. Okay. Sounds great. I have a question right here. Hi, John. Oh, hi. Hey. Um, like you said, um, security is the bedrock for BlackBerry. Um, recently, there's been hacking and uh, security breaches in the iOS world. And because of that, Apple and Android have now gone into security. And having Apple uh, recently teaming up with IBM going into the enterprise market, um, it's it's foreseeable future that they'll also move into the enterprise as well and bring security along with them. How is BlackBerry to stay ahead of the competition and, and maintain its market share and, and also expand that market share having a uh, first competition like this with a company that's worth upwards of $600 billion market caps? Yeah, um, so the, the um, long-term answer is that we need to continue to invest in this area. Cannot stand still. Yeah. Um, the shorter term answer is, re remember I refer back to the patents. For example, we have the ECC patents in the world. If anybody uses ECC, if I want to assert, I could take them out of business. Okay. And uh, I don't know whether you guys remember a company called Silicon. We own Silicon. So the, the, all these current government encrypted applications are all based on silicons. So now, we don't tend to apply our patents as a troll. Okay? We like to encourage people to use it. So, but what we're working on is so-called the silicon tube. We like to be ahead of other people. Because it's one of those things, is, is, this has now become a market principle 101. Is that how wide do you want the market to be? You want to shut it down so that you're the only one, but the market size is, you know, the growth of that might be limited. Or you want everybody to use it and then you build on top. That's, then the market could be extremely big. So that's the question. And by the way, it's not a yes or no answers. It's kind of in between, depending on what technology we're using. So um, those are the things. Second thing that people, I like to talk a little bit about the Apple IBM. Uh, the Apple IBM are focusing on enterprise apps. Ideally, it could run on my collaborative software, which is our server. This is why I made our server being capable to manage the iOS device as well as the Android, as well as Windows, as well as BlackBerry. So the question is, if I could not manage those seamlessly, as one, an IT shop would not want to have more than one uh, platform. And if I make that more secure, uh, then they would probably use ours. And it doesn't violate the fact that Apple and IBM could build their apps on top. 
Because therefore, if you play the market carefully and correctly, you could turn that into not a heroin game, but a edited game. Okay, so I think this market still needs to have time to push up. Um, I, I wouldn't be overly worried about that. Um, the one thing that people always ask me, though, what are you, are you concerned with the Apple IBM collaboration? Um, I jokingly always say, you know, you have two elephant dancing. They usually step on each other's toes. Um, <laughs> they can't get out of the way. Because Paul wants to be in charge. When you have that situation, um, it, gets, it gets very messy. IBM and Apple had a number of collaboration before. You can go back and Google it and find the partnership. Most of all of them failed or dissolved because of that. Um, but I can't count that. Okay? So I can only count on the fact that I hope they're successful and I hope I could intercept that base myself. Of course, a lot of things have to happen between now and then. We have to do the right thing. They have to do the right thing. The market has to make their choices. So it's not a slam dunk. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much on, on, on a head-on head on face. Okay, question back here. Hi, John. Um, I've got a couple questions. First, um, it's about mobile payment. I think uh, you mentioned a little bit about Internet of Things earlier. Um, a lot of mobile uh, players are entering the mobile payment. I'm wondering what is BlackBerry's plan for mobile payment. And second of all, you talked about IoT, but how about wearable technology? What is that plan moving forward? Um, and the second question is about priorities. You mentioned financial and privacy security would be first priority, uh, but with the market right now looking for apps to actually share data, uh, do you the see- The market, sorry, I, I missed it, the market. The market and the consumer these days are looking more apps to share data instead of protecting data. Do you find it might be a bit too late to slow again for BlackBerry if you move into the apps after privacy? Yes, go ahead, two questions. Um, okay, well that's, okay, so, so um, let me explain, um, let's, let's talk about IoT uh, for a second. Um, the, the, as I mentioned earlier, the IoT world is just being developed. And in the real IoT world today, there, there isn't really any big applications to that. Now, uh, I have chose not to get into the application space, but rather go into the infrastructure, infrastructure space by stressing how devices communicate securely. So, it, it, I, this is an oversimplification, but what I really want to think about is we are building the next Cisco box, but software. Where Cisco is where they manage the internet assets. I'm gonna build a software Cisco box equivalent to manage the IoT communications. And that's what we're gonna do, okay? And one thing, um, certainly in a turnaround situation, um, you cannot broaden yourself too much. First of all, you don't have the bandwidth, the people, or all the resources to become very broad. Even if I know exactly what every thing's, you know, I know there's an IoT application in fleet management, transportation, huge market around the world. People want to know exactly where each of the container is at what time and when it's breached. This is the ORFID and, and, and all that. Huge market, but Back to the earlier question, how do I choose what path to take? Well, you know, I look through our 8,000 people. Uh, nobody knows anything about tracking containers. <laughs> so, I mean, yes, I could go buy a company that does that. Uh, you know, uh, there's a company called TOA for Time of Arrival. They've done extremely well, okay? Uh, guess what? I think Oracle just bought them. And, and so, now, would I be stupid enough to compete with Oracle on buying that company? No, not really. So what I need to do is to build the infrastructure where Oracle would want to take that application and put it online. Uh, and again, uh, I'm not suggesting it's already done. I'm suggesting that's the plan. Uh, and so, so that's the, 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 the 
good question. As far as so good, you, you back into um, application, then I'd like to talk about two things about applications. First, I already talked about things that I most likely would not get into. The application space that BlackBerry are interested in are the so-called regulated industry space. Now, government, there's no application of governments because they all do their own. Um, and they don't want you to know what application they're building. You just provide a choose and instructions. And so that's one, one, one group. Um, healthcare is the number one application space that we want to be in. Um, because we talk about collaboration, we talk about you know, security, um, we are now working with GD, for example, to embed in every piece of the medical devices the ability to use secure Wi-Fi to transfer data. So you could be taking a look at the patients, taking a um, you know MRI or MRA or or um, you know heart monitor or so forth. It will it will transfer in real time those data onto a number of screens securely where a doctor could conference together and a doctor and patients could talk in real time. Okay, so those applications we're very interested in, and we're actually working on those. We talk about connected cars in terms of privacy, um, that we're working on those. So those apps we will do, um, but other apps we won't. Now, we focus on those apps. There's another side benefit. Um, a lot of the consumer apps, you don't know the origin of it. And, and if you focus too much on the consumer apps, it may violate our ability to keep the environment very secure. Now we're back to point number one. If I don't have security to differentiate ourselves, we will lose the entire business. Because now you're into, you know, Apple had 10 million apps. How many do you have? Uh, uh, well, okay. <laughs> Once I'm on that, on that, conversation, I lose. It's like trying to figure out who has more money, Lee ka or me. <laughs> That's kind of stupid, right? So I want to make sure we protect the secure environment that maybe only appeal to the 30% of the market. But if I could get to the 30% market, even an unfair share of it, the company would be very big. Okay, we have a question on this side, up there. Uh, hello, John. Uh, I'm a comparative newer user of BlackBerry. So uh, but after a try, I really like the productivity of the device. However, uh, I think that a lot of um, cost, uh, consumer in the market, they actually do not know that they, they need the productivity or the security for the, for the BlackBerry device. So in, on the marketing strategy, uh, what are you planning to do to actually like educate or sh share the importance for the value that you have say, such as the security, privacy, and communication? Um, today, I don't have any plan to share. And the reason is again, um, if everybody wants to buy a phone from me, I'm actually not equipped to deliver that. I don't have the distribution channels, I'm rebuilding that. Uh, and I don't have the support systems, and I'm rebuilding that. So, and I don't, I cannot risk putting too much money in building more phones ahead of this demand in terms of inventory control, which we talked about the first thing, because it will burn out all my cash, which yes, I have three billion plus, but it's, you know, in the world of mass consumers uh, adoption, that three, three billion one is nothing. You know, 31 billion might be more like it. Uh, so today, in order to get the patients back on its two feet, is something that I chose to forego for now. Sometime down the road, maybe there's a chance to return. Um, and, and this comes back to uh, people who's interested in, in business um, strategy. Uh, you, you know, in order to gain, uh, to return companies back into uh, certain form of stability and, and and viability, you have to make choices. And by definition, when one makes choice, you have to be very clear what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. It's not about you're going to do these things and yeah, I'm going to do some of those too when people call. I could easily tell you, sitting here, 
that, oh yeah, we are going to make a marketing campaign and do that. If, if somebody sit here and tell you that, that person is full of it. If, if, if that person believe it, then that company is in real trouble. If the company, if the, because we will spread ourselves too thin and too broad before we get into this trouble state. Okay? If we continue to do that and think that somewhere along the line I could do it better than others, which is, which may be, but probability is extremely low. So you got to focus on it. So I have chose to not go educate that everybody should use a keyboard and with much bigger battery life, a longer battery life, um, and, and all the security features that build in to protect your privacy. Protect your privacy. I will let the success of the enterprise space speak for itself over time. But we still have ways to go. Okay. Question right up here. Hi, John. Um, Okay. Well, I'd like to ask you on your turnaround strategy. Uh, Twelve months ago, before you joined, everybody was writing off BlackBerry, the analysts, the investors. So people were counting your life in months. Um, in the darkest hour of BlackBerry, what was your message to the investors, to your clients, and to your staff? What was your message to turn it around? Wow. Um, <laughs> so, um, like everything um, in life, is really about confidence, confidence building. So, the darkest hours. Um, what I always focus on um, is to make sure that the customer. By the way, first of all, forget about Wall Street. Um, I don't know what I will offend anybody here, but <laughs> Wall Street is a you know is it, it, is a relationship that they want to make money off you, <laughs> and you want to get money from them. <laughs> that relationship you actually don't need to work on because if you if you can't make money for them, you never find them. <laughs> um, I can get any Wall Street firms to call me if I tell them you know, what I need to do is broadcast the fact that I'm thinking of buying a company or two in Asia. Tomorrow that would be like 12 emails and everybody's my best friend again. Okay. <laughs> again. again. Right. And then I said, oh, no, no, I was just kidding. Then <laughs> the friend's gone away. So uh, a lot of CEO likes to focus on Wall Street. Um, I don't talk to Wall Street. I think the numbers have to speak for itself. When they see that the company is undervalued and has a chance of, of rising in momentum, they will, be, they will be your best friend again. Uh, now, the customers are different. The customers require your assurance. That's why I always go see for a customer first. You first learn about what they think you're doing. Um, by the way, one thing in 101, turnaround strategy. Never go ask a customer what you think I should do. <laughs> do not ever do that. This is like this. You went, you're not feeling well. You went to see a doctor. The doctor said, what do you think I should give you? <laughs> you were there and said, uh, I pay you, you're the expert. You're asking me. So never ask that question. I always go there and say, this is what I think we should be doing. Are we doing that? And they would tell you. They said, not anywhere close, for example. <laughs> okay, then you, you ask why, and then you learn that, and you, then you go. Um, so, um, in the darkest hours, you have to get the customers first. The customers then will, then you come back and you tell the, the, the employees that, I spoke to so and so and so, and they're using our product. And by the way, um, it didn't work. Okay, it has this, 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 this miss. Listen, let's focus on that. Employees are more interested in focusing on what they do and how they could contribute. They don't care about this big picture talk and you know the future is really bright talk because you know the fact that you're not doing well, everybody knows. Your employees are most sensitive because their livelihoods depend on you. Um, and so you, you got to stay away from these, this, this kind of the big, big talk, blowing smoke 
by faith. Uh, you get to focus on what task are we going to do. Um, for example, I was really proud of myself and, and the team that in the 11 months we went in, where well, you talk about the darkest days. Uh, if you count back the 11 months where we have got the employee that was able to do, despite the fact that we almost cut half of our populations, we do need a, a low-end entry device on set three with Foxconn building it in four and a half months. And it's done pretty well in Southeast Asia. We don't make a lot of money, volumes are okay. We always run out of stock. We keep replenish the stock. Okay. Um, in that period of time, we make our software cross platform, we make our BBM cross platform, we release BBM money in Indonesia for mobile payments. We did the Canadian mobile payment system on uh, in stream uh, as a as a called an environment. We released our passport. We're about to release our enterprise server, the flagship enterprise server, in on November 13. And a month later, we'll release our BlackBerry Classic, which was the your 9900s, a little bit more powerful. And if you sit back and say, how many companies could cut half the people and not doing well and focus on getting all these things done? Our passport, some, way, some people may not like the size, but it's sold out from day one. Uh, we can't make enough of them right now. It's sold out in Malaysia, it's sold out in India, it's sold out on the United States uh, websites, uh, blackberry.com, it's sold out on Amazon, it's sold out everywhere. Um, and Hong Kong is sold out, by the way, CSL has it. Um, we released it a couple of weeks ago, it's sold out. So, you know, despite uh, all the turmoil the company have gone through, if you focus the team on tasks that they could see, and they could see how it relates to not only the market but the customers, they usually rally around it. So they have less of a chance to spread these doomsday story around because they're working hard. And that, that's the art of managing the situation. And you celebrate a little success. And this is why sometimes I go public and say certain things. It's really not meant for the public. It's really meant for the employees. Uh, because then the employees um, feel appreciated. And they see how what they work on related to what was being publicly digested. That's a very big motivator. It's, it's beyond, you know, crap talk and money and everything else. It's about how do I help us better. And so, I hope I answer your question. Okay. I, I have a quick question. So, um, I was a former um, BlackBerry like fanatic. I love BlackBerry. Um, you know, I had the BlackBerry Pearl, I had the white BlackBerry. And what I loved about it is that when I was on my BlackBerry, people would say, okay, she's doing work. If I put out the iPhone or something else, they'd be like, oh, she's obviously playing a game, right? So, um, I think, um, it's wonderful that you've gone you know, back to the drawing board and like, resuscitating the patient uh, and getting BlackBerry back on his feet. But do you see in the future you broadening, um, I mean, rebranding and giving BlackBerry this patient a facelift so that it becomes sexy again to have BlackBerry sleek and sexy, both from a design point of view and also from um, the fact that, like, even now, like you're saying, like Facebook and being in all these places. Facebook's like a dinosaur. All my friends were using you know, Instagram, were using WeChat. And then you know, BlackBerry can realize, even email and the people who use it, I'm trying to tell my team, like, you know, 80% of emails go unopened. In inter office, we don't do email. External, we will. So how, are you, how, are, how is BlackBerry going to evolve and uh, to reclaim what I think you can do, cult status? Because obviously, if there are people still using you and believing in you, that means the comeback is yet to come. Okay, uh, but this uh, similar answer is the same as the earlier questions. Um, uh, whether I should teach the um, consumer at large, uh, you know, the power of, you know, whether it's productivity or security and so forth. Um, the, the being sexy and being a workforce are two different design points. When a company does well, you could probably do both. Uh, but today, it's a little too early. Um, that doesn't mean that we won't transition to that. 
But today is really about I'm, I'm, I'm providing the hardware and software to make you more productive so that you can achieve. This is not a toy. This is not a time pastor. This is actually, it's not an entertainment system. This is actually your trusted work tool. Uh, now, I, I agree that it might not be as sexy, but I wanted to, you to sit back and think about one thing. Um, you probably all know that Samsung, we have one of the biggest installation and ship more phones than Apple, is having trouble in making money. They are making themselves, quote unquote, trying to be sexy, but they are now tripped on both ends. On the lower ends, you've got Xiaomi and Lenovo and even local producer that you have never heard of, that I have seen a five inch touchscreen phone from China that actually sells for seventy nine dollars. That runs Android. Okay. Samsung tried to be sexy in that. If they sell it at one ninety nine, they probably lose this money because of the marketing budget they have put together. So therefore, will a consumer pay that delta differences? Uh, the answer is probably no. Even if they do, the margins are very slim, if not negative. So uh, and that is not a space that I believe today BlackBerry could afford to play in. Let alone the fact that I probably have to put a lot of energy, time, and resource and money to get Instagram over. Um, what we do have the older technology like the Facebook and the Twitter of the world. Um, I signed an agreement with Amazon. <clears throat> Amazon is going to go get these consumer apps. That all, all any, any Amazon apps will run on the BlackBerry tag. So today Amazon, now Amazon um, app stores is about 250,000 apps. Nothing compared to iPhone or Google Play. Google Play is probably a couple of millions and so is iPhone. Okay. But on the other hand, it's much better than I spend the money on. So I'm using, you know, leveraging that. But it's really not our design point at this, at this time. Maybe over time it could be, um, but uh, I've got to be very careful. I don't overextend ourselves. Okay. Uh, another question here. Okay. Um, uh, thanks, John. Thanks for coming. Uh, I have two questions. The first one is that can you comment more on the uh, inventory management policy of February when the company is shifting from the turnaround phase to the growth phase? Because as you mentioned, Passport is so popular right now. Uh, many people think this is a cool phone. Uh, but what I observe is that uh, the BlackBerry fans probably on the Cradbury uh, forum saying that oh the delivery time is so disappointing and some sales analysts are concerned about the actual sales cycle of Passport and think that BlackBerry may, may have raised a very good product because the supply cannot come up. Uh, yes, and another question is that uh, about cybersecurity. We all saw from the newspaper that every day there are security breaches like JP Morgan, Home Depot, and UPS. They all suffer from different levels of uh, security breaches. Can BlackBerry using its technology to play a role in this scenario? Yeah, it's, these are my questions. Thanks. Right. Okay. Um, okay. The, uh, uh, the second uh, the second question is easy to answer. Um, um, we have studied uh, the. Um, the so-called cyber attack, or the hacking of it. Um, uh, most of, we could probably do something and help out uh, each and every one of those cases. Um, JP Morgan, of course, is a big customer of ours. Um, what we have seen most of the time is people hack in through the application vulnerability. It's not the operating system, or it's not the process, it's the application vulnerability. So, what we have done was we work a deal with Trend Micro that we're now scanning any applications that put on our devices, even including Android. Uh, and that the only, you know, the, it's called a BlackBerry Guardian, is to protect the devices. But again, you know, in, in, the, in the world of cyber attack and malware, uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a cat and mouse game. Uh, once we cross a certain point, um, they, you know, people would then break that and then we should keep going. And, but it is just, you know, facts of life. So that's, that's the second question. On the inventory control, 
uh, inventory management. Um, most company that loses money on inventory comes with two possibilities. One, they overestimated the receptivity of the product. And you will hear management talk about lead time managements uh, or just in time. It's actually another code word of ordering ahead of time. Um, so you gotta be very careful on that. So there's no esti estimation of that. Secondly, business tend to um, um, underestimate what inventory really costs. Uh, I don't, probably a lot of you are in the business of, been through the business. Inventory costs are not just the parts you buy or the labor you contracted. There are the costs of warranty, there are the costs of royalties, there are costs of repair, and the costs of logistics. The flat, the latter four could go up to 15, 20% of your parts costs. Most people talk about inventory, they think about bill of materials, you know, because in the good old days, components are very expensive. But that has changed. Okay? Inventory now is really a end-to-end -end cost structure. What I have found at most companies, my first company I turned around is a hardware company. Same problems. They only counted the raw material cost. And, and, then, and, then, and, then, and then was very surprised when things are not moving off the shelf, they end up with these big costs. Um, and, and so when we look at inventories, we look at it in a more holistic way. I took a very conservative approach when we released our passports. Um, we didn't order or pre-build as many. But I figured that if I was wrong, it's a better problem to be wrong. If I order too many, and if I was wrong, I have a bigger issue. Because the auditor will force me to write it off, then we back to two years ago problem that BlackBerry faces, which is we overestimated the demand and we start writing it off because handset and electronics, obviously, are kind of like white wine. You can't really keep it on the shelf for too long. It depleted in values. So um, that's why we, we did what we did. But I'm glad that we're having you know supply issues because uh, you know at least people wanted the phone. Or is the amount better than you expect? I'm sorry? Is the amount of passport better than you expect? Yes. Okay. No question right here. All right, thanks. Thanks, John. Thank you. That was a good talk. That's sort of insight there. Um, I wanted to sort of get your uh, insight or views into uh, the sort of enterprise uh, collaboration market. Um, I understand that you have 80,000 uh, very, very good enterprise server. 80,000. Yeah, 80,000, yes. Which does uh, the uh, essentially the interconnectivity between uh, the email system, the contacts, and even the launch it on normal thing. Um, what I wanted to get from you was, uh, in terms of the direction the market is going, um, there's been a lot of noise about uh, the usage of emails as a collaboration platform, mm. or, or, or I see the misuse of emails as a collaboration platform. Uh, and, and therefore there's been uh, whether you know players like box.com, Dropbox, or even other players like Yammer comes in that tries to sort of fulfill the market in for uh, enterprises. And um, I have a personal interest in because I run a listed company that says uh, has a a platform that is being used by senior management and directors of boards in over 10 countries. So, so we do uh, sort of collaboration layer like on documents, uh, which is non-email based. So, uh, and the, one of the key strategy questions I have, obviously, in going is, you know, should I, how much should we push uh, our collaboration platform uh, from the directors and senior management down to the next level knowledge makers. And where is that market? Is it ready yet? Is it something that is about to go on or is still people are not ready for it? Uh, because given that you have Maudai, as you mentioned earlier, uh, everybody's going mobile 
And you have also clearly said that this has to be multi-platform. So now we have mobile multi-platform knowledge workers who uh, use email for communication, but there is a space there in terms of collaboration space, which, you know, off the com, I'm trying to fulfill. So this really, I wanted to get your insight into that and see how what. Well, um, this is a, uh, a personal view. Um, first of all, email can never be a collaborative platform. Email is the information exchange platform. Uh, Dropbox, Box, and Watchdogs, which is the secure version of Dropbox, they've done a very good job in being able to make file transfer, electronic file transfer, uh, a much easier uh, and make it boundaryless. So it, it, it has a need. It has a need in the market, but it's not going to be the, the collaborative platform. The, the real collaboration platform, in my opinion, are in the data analytics. Because if you buy my premise of every intelligence device is going to connect to each other, the only way for these, team, these intelligence devices to talk, not only on the standard protocol, and there's a lot of standard protocol on that, um, is how did they exchange information that became enforceable or actable, the things you can act on. Um, that's where the data analytics comes in. Data analytics has always been the most underexploited market potentials, in my opinion. So what, if I have collaboration, if I want to do collaboration, uh, whether it's for the knowledge where uh, people and so forth, is, is, uh, or the knowledge based workers, is really about how I exchange the intelligence. How do I recognize, how does machine recognize the same problem that has been tackled before? So that, I think, is the ultimate collaboration. Today, you can share files, like, like, a, like a box and a drop box. And, and I think it's going to have good business. They're very successful. Right. Right. But they're going to run into a limit of the intelligence sharing. There is no intelligence sharing on box. Right. So there's not enough value add on to what they're doing to Not after box and drop box. I think they have taken. I'll give you one example. Um, Watchdogs. It's a secure Dropbox. They had trouble raising the last round. <laughs> That's a good sign, I guess. Okay, uh, question here. Hi, my name is Clement. I'm a reporter with Book of News. Um, just a couple of questions. Uh, I want to follow up on your comments on China and Russia. Uh, that you guys have to be very careful in approaching those markets. Um, if you could just talk maybe more in China, what are the issues um, that you are facing and uh, what is your expansion plans um, in, the, in, in the market? Um, also, I actually didn't hear that, sorry. Um, your plans in China and Russia. So you said you oh, guys no, have a plan in China and Russia? Yeah, no. in terms of, you said you, were, you need to be very careful, right? So can you talk more, uh, maybe give us an idea of what are the issues that you're thinking about and uh, what you might do uh, immediately? Um, also, a second question on BDM money. Uh, we know it's very popular in Indonesia. Um, maybe an idea of uh, the number of active users of BDM money and what are the, uh, any, any plans to expand the footprint? Basically, to Okay. Um, so, uh, the, the first one is very short. Uh, I don't have any plans in China or Russia. Uh, and uh, I'm exploring plans in China or Russia. Uh, and um, um, as I said, pointed out earlier, um, in two weeks will be my first official visit as BlackBerry uh, going to China. And I would like to understand what the ecosystem looks like. Uh, I know that what I cannot do is to go the traditional way and go to China and Russia and open up stores or hiring people and you know one at a time and then somehow figure out you know maybe China Mobile would distribute a product or Unicorn and so forth. I don't think that works. Um, that, that's my opinion. I mean, I think that's kind of a day late and dollar short. Um, uh, and, and it might not worth my risk of having to. My, to, to, to address the concern that I have uh, in you know, some of my current customer base. But um, there might be a, a much more broader approach to both of the markets, especially in the China market, uh, that could work. And I'll, you know, I have some ideas, but 
since the idea is only restricted to myself only, uh, so you know, it'll be, I will call it the wishful thinking at this point. In a couple of weeks' time, I will probably know a little bit more after I, I have mine up to speak to a few people that could give me some advice and shed some lights on, on how to do that. It's clear that, um, in my mind, that BlackBerry needs to and should be in one of both of those markets sometime in the future. Uh, but it's not an easy thing to just get into it. Um, we got the BBM money, we launched on September 17th in Indonesia. So it's still early to tell what the MAU is going to look like. Um, it was a collaboration um, with um, Indoset and Telcom Cell, as well as with uh, Promata Bank. And so the uniqueness of BlackBerry is we're able, because the, the, the BlackBerry claim to fame of this reliability, and that's why you can get email anywhere and so forth, is we have a direct connect. We have, a, we have a network that can directly connect to 635 operators around the world. There's only 1,000, where we have the bigger 635. And this is why the email roaming is so strong at, at BlackBerry, um, and the security of it. The advantage of that is we are able, we're the only, we're the only company today that are able to put a purchase on either your phone bill or debit against your bank account. We're the only one that could do it today because of our connections that we exist in the past. And then we're taking advantage of that in Indonesia and see whether that, that works. The reason why Indonesia is, is important is that first we have to make a, lot, a big market share of that. But uh, secondly, is that Indonesia is a debit-based economy. Uh, people use top-up, you know, airtime and debit cards. They don't use credit cards, right? It's hard to convince people to use credit card and uh, that uses credit card, credit-based society, to use have some kind of a virtual money transfer scheme. Um, and so we, we decided to try it in a debit-based society first. They could debit on their primary bank account or they could put it on their phone bill. And a lot of the phone bill, they topped up phone bill. So there's virtually no risk from a transaction point of view. So we settle all that. Back in the, yeah. uh, John. Um, no, 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 no. Come back. Sorry. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, you've been next, probably. Okay, thanks, John. Uh, I've been a BlackBerry fan for quite a long time. Uh, I think starting from uh, OS 4, with the, especially the hardware keyboard is the best thing, I think. But um, I think it actually comes to a point that the screen size and the uh, resolution can be a little compromised uh, if we choose the hardware keyboard. So I would like to see uh, what you think about the uh, fanblade market. Uh, would you consider like uh, the five to six point five inch uh, devices to be manufactured by BlackBerry, or for, for productivity? Would you also reconsider, say, launching uh, the tablet side for the BlackBerry? Because I think that would be very useful for us. So that's my uh, first question. Yeah, and uh, the second question is. Uh, uh, I used to live uh, quite close to the uh, UK office for uh, BlackBerry and uh, now uh, back in Hong Kong uh, uh, it seems that uh, the maintenance side is um, uh, not as comprehensive as there because uh, uh, it is outsourced here. So uh, I would like to see if you would like to, I think most of us are now living in Hong Kong and working in Hong Kong so uh, would you consider having a retail outlet or a customer contact point, uh, your own one in Hong Kong so that we feel closer to the company? Thanks, okay. And since you're asked two questions, no more time for any other question. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, the only retail, I'll answer the second question first. Uh, the only retail store we have is, is in Dubai. Uh, we are redoing our customer interaction. Thank you. Uh, we are redoing our customer interactions um, uh, in terms of supports. And we realize that the carriers uh, are not um, the best first line support. Or they might be the first line support, but certainly not the good second line support. Uh, because technology has moved so fast. Um, so we are working on that. Um, I cannot tell you in Hong Kong how we're going to come out. But on a worldwide basis, we are reworking all our customer touch points. So that, that you know, so it will take a little bit of time. Um, I would love to have a tablet. But I would not 
uh, I don't want to build just another tablet. Um, there are enough tablets out there. You know, Android has a tablet. Um, you know, obviously iPad and all that. Right? So, um, if we're going to build a tablet, we're going to build something I hope reasonably um, attractive. I mean, uh, we no doubt we're working on it. Um, you know, the tablet with physical keyboard is a huge challenge. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so that's one thing that we want to think about um, how we want to do this. Right. So that's that's that one. That backs to your first question, which is we do have a five-inch phone um, and a Z3. Um, we do have um, a big launch and a screen phone like Z30, uh, but they don't have the physical keyboards. Uh, when you put the physical keyboards on it and to make it physically manageable is actually the, the largest size actually going to be the passport that at least you physically to manage it um, but um, we are working on a concept that may solve both of your questions my only point is i do realize and agree with you in some of the you know wouldn't it be nice you have a large enough screen and also be able to be touch screens and also have the physical keyboards um, but not make it so awkward that you can't keep it anywhere um, so we agree that that is a challenge that we have to address okay on that note i'm going to ask everyone to take 30 seconds to one minute to fill in the evaluation survey uh, we have one more of these sessions, November 21st, so um, be on the lookout for the information in the coming week. And um, I've known John for a long time. I've seen him uh, dance up on stage many, many times, but this is definitely fitting a standing ovation. So thank you.